Yeah. Okay, we're looking at a question taken from the textbook. It's pulleys and wedges higher level, so it's an introduction to, in this case, we're just looking at pulleys. And we're going to follow a typical example taken from page 143, where it's got the solution done up. So we'll see if we can follow through. We'll set it up the same as they would have set it up, but when we are solving the equations, we'll actually think, come up with a method that I think is much handier to want to develop the textbook. So step one, you draw a diagram. Step two, you show the forces acting on each block within the diagram. And sometimes in a question, it asks you to draw each of these out separately. But for starters, if I draw my 5m mass, 5m, my force up is going to be what? T. T, and my force down? 5mg. 5mg. So we come over here and we say we've got a force up of T, we've got a force down of 5mg. Now that whole system has got a mass of 5m, on the right hand side the whole system has got a mass of 4m, so this is going to go up or down? Down. down. So we're going to say it moves down with an acceleration a. So we complete this problem here, the sub-problem by writing out my equation, which is going to be, if that's going downwards, 5mg 5mg equals, and that's equation number one. Nice and easy, it's the easiest equation of the whole life. We've now got to look at what's happening over here. C, we're told, is a light pulley. In fact, we can ignore this guy because it's tied up to the top, so it's not accelerating at all. C is a light pulley, which basically means it's got no mass, or we assume it'll have no mass for our questions. But we still have to look at the forces up and the forces down. And any rope, if there's a tension on the rope, if you're grabbing one side of it, I'm grabbing the other side, and we're both pulling, it's one rope, it's got the same tension. And in one case, if I'm pulling this direction, you're pulling me back in that direction, so the tension is coming in that direction, as I see it, or as you see it if you're over there, and I'm pulling the rope here, the tension is acting in this direction. So you can have a tension T acting in two different directions in the rope. So at the beginning, we're going to have a T which is pulling this guy up, but it's the same rope, it's also responsible for pulling this guy up, so there's also going to be a T there. Coming down here, what force is acting down on this? Well, you've got a second rope, so it's going to be a second tension, so instead of calling it T, we're going to call it S. And similarly, it's coming down over here. It's the same rope, so it's the same tension. One rope, one tension. So that's also S. So my equation of motion for particle C is going to be what? T up minus my down. 2S. 2S, 2S equals? 0. Zero. Mass times acceleration. So it's my mass is going to be 0 times whatever acceleration the whole system will be going down at, which we would be, in our case, it would be going up at acceleration A. But all of that goes to zero, because our mass is zero. Now, the question that's often asked is, why do I not say the force is going down is 4mg? So I could have said T minus 4mg is equal to zero times A. You can't say that, because if you're doing that, it's obvious here that the force is coming down is an S and S. Why can't I say that there is 4mg? But well, let's put a little circle around these two together. If the force acting down is 4mg, I'm saying it's S acting down. It's, it's obvious that it's S. Can I replace that by 4mg? If I was to do that, let's take a look at the forces <coughs> acting on these bottom ones. Acting upwards there, one tension, so going up it's going to be what? S. And going up here it's going to be S. Coming down here, I have a force of what? And coming down here, 3mg. Now here's the thing. These two S's here, I can't say that the force acting down on this is, is equal to the two S's. It is equal to my, the force acting down is two S's, but I can't say the force acting down is 4mg. Because in doing so, I'd be assuming that the two S's equal 4mg. And by looking at this inner green circle, if the two S's going up equal the 4mg going down, then that would mean that these objects here wouldn't be accelerating. But we do know that they are accelerating. If they're accelerating, then the overall force up can be equal to the overall force down. Therefore, you can't say that 2s is 4mg. Therefore, I can't say what my 2s coming down here is. I can't say, well, why can't I just write that as 4mg? Because it's not equal. So what we've got to say is my forces are 2s's. So my force going up is t, my force coming down is 2s, and I can just say all of that is equal to 0, and that's equation 2. Get rid of this green circle if I can. And we've got two other equations to write out. One of them is quite straightforward, one of them is quite tricky. So we're looking at the straightforward one first, which is 
Uh, yeah, find out which is straightforward. I know my overall acceleration here is going down with A, so all of this is going up with acceleration A. So over here, it's all going up with acceleration A. This end is going up with acceleration A. Now you've got to look internally at the two masses. If I hold this constant, just for a second, and was to look at these, which of the M or the 3 M would go upwards? M. M. And that's going to go up with a separate acceleration. We're going to call it B. So if that's going to go up, if I hold that constant with acceleration B, this goes down with acceleration B. In fact, I put it underneath just so I don't get confused. It's going down with an acceleration B. So we'll take a look at this guy. It's the easier one. Once again, we look at our forces up and our forces down. And my force up is what? Minus. Minus. Uh, equals. Uh, mass uh, times. Okay. You've got two different accelerations, so you can add the two of them. So it's A times A plus B. Okay? So it's going up at one acceleration in here within the green circle, and then the whole green circle itself is going up at a second acceleration. So it's the two of them together, nice and easy. That's equation number three. The last equation is the one we've got to worry about. This is particle E. Now, force is acting on this upwards. What, sorry, I had a force up there with S, and I had a force down. Well, I'm, I'll only clutter it up if I put them in. So as I look at it now, what force up do I have here? S, S going up. Minus what force going down? 3mg. Equals? 3m. 3m. A minus B. And here's where we've got to be careful. I have to decide before I start, is this overall particle going to move up, or is the overall particle going to move down? See, it's going up with one acceleration, it's going down with another acceleration. And the trick here is to assume I don't know. You don't know, so what you're going to do is guess. But if you're guessing, you have got to be consistent with the forces and the accelerations. So you could have assumed it was going up. In this case, I did assume it was going up, so I said my upward force minus my downward force. So it's an upward force minus a downward force is equal to 3m times it's got to be my upward acceleration minus my downward acceleration, which in this case is a minus b. A minus b. So that's equation number four. Now, if I did that the other way around, if I assumed it was going down, I would say my downward force minus my upward force is equal to my mass times my downward acceleration, which was b, minus my upward acceleration, which is a. And that equation is just that equation multiplied by minus one. So both equations are the very same. So it doesn't matter which of the two you pick, but if it's an upward minus a downward force, it must be an upward minus a downward acceleration. <coughs> if it's a downward minus an upward force, it must be a downward minus an upward acceleration. Okay? And that's step, well that's probably step two. Step one is drawing in all the forces. Step two is taking the equations. And what I'm now going to do is show you how to solve the equations. So I'm going to rewrite these nice and simple. But when I rewrite them, we are going to uh, rewrite them in a special manner. Okay? Kieran, you okay for a minute? Yeah. All right, here we go. First equation, I'm going to get rid of all of these, and you're going to call them out to me. We don't need the diagram anymore. All we need are four equations, and it's going to be relatively straightforward. What was my first equation?